Delivering the findings of the research to start it out. In this, Dr. Ms. Professor Sandez Kelamama will present to you the findings. If you don't know this one, you can start with others. So that almost noon, but I can still greet. Good morning again. Good morning. Welcome. Those who are not here during the introduction, you are most welcome. And I hope I, I will have the platform to go straight into the presentation of the findings that we found here in Mayuge. And we'll also provide you with the findings from Kampala and Gulu, so that you have an overview of what is going on. We also have few snapshots of what is compounding in Uganda, but not exclusive. In Mayuge, as I said before, we were here a year ago, and we stayed for about four days, I think. We collected that. We went to uh, places, the areas of coverage here in Mayuge, um, three areas, Imanyiro, Sub county, I may pronounce it badly, but I will ask for excuse. Imanyiro uh, sub county at Imanyiro village, this is where the concentration of the researchers went to. Mpungwe sub county at Mpungwe village, and Mayuge town council at Igamba, A zone. These were areas of data collection we were guided. And I would like to say a few things before I go to the slides. Some of the challenges our researchers met, or we met here, I'll mention three of them because they affected the, somehow it, it has some discussion point based on the results that we have found. Number one, respondents were hesitant to provide information. It came as a result of interaction. There was some hesitation in providing information. But the Honorable LC5 Vice Chair mentioned here that if a rat has come in the house and you still ignore, you don't want to act on it, you will not get any good results. At the end, you begin to regret why you did not do that. So we work with what we got, but there was some hesitation to give information. The second thing was that uh, youth are not targeted properly with the empowerment programs. Huge concern. The challenge, challenges were there. It has implication in what I'm going to present to you. The third one, policies and programs are not disseminated to youth in my UK. If it is, not comprehensively, not properly. Those challenges were there because as you heard from the video, we had objectives and I'm sure some of the objectives are in front of you there and some of them are here on the posters. If you have time, you can take a snapshot of that. And during the research, some observations were made and Islam faith is dominant in Mayuge, it's a fact. And there is a lot of redundancy among the youth, it's a fact. Therefore, there are also a lot of mosques for different Muslim sects in Mayuge, different sections. I am doing this so that I bring you to tune with what you are going to see on the slides. Key issues emerge that people in Mayuge acknowledge that the areas of violence can be recalled and existed from the time of the movement of Christian Alice Lapuena in 1987, who also abducted some people from Mayuge, including Hamir of Imanyiro sub-county, who was taken 
and his body was found later in a swamp. It had a serious implication on what has been growing up. The recruitment of youth to join violent extremist groups is here in my UK. It has been found, it exists, and it is done silently in areas like Malongo and others. This came from the result of our finding, few of them. There is a redundancy amongst the youth which makes them easy to be lured into violent activities. There are government programs and policies like the Youth Livelihood Program, but it has not been successful because it was not properly disseminated. The parenting of children and youth in my unit is very poor, which leads to indiscipline who are easily lured into illegal activities. There is a lot of drug abuse in Mayuge amongst the youth, which gives them false courage to engage in wrong activities. Less efforts have been put to address gender-based issues in Mayuge because most interventions are benefiting the main youth. Mayuge represents one of the highest districts in fertility rate, with an average minimum of six children per female who is less than 30, 35 years old, and could be the seventh, sixth wife. And there are so many idle youth. Now, that said, I want to go to my presentation and give you this view that has been both majorly actually quantitative results and also some narratives behind all this quantitative <coughs> data that we corroborated, configured, analyzed, and summarized for you to make it easier. Me and Dr. Trofina together with Alemo, with other teams, we really sat down and looked at these things again and again and again. And there are also papers that we presented, which is desktop research, to see what is there, what comes from the media, what comes from the newspapers, what comes from uh, other researches about Mayuge, about Uganda, about Gulu, about Kasese, and then we put them together. So, the structure of my presentation, allow me to sit down, don't mind. I am I'm going to look at my unit first, but what will, I will identify here is the pulling and pushing factors that make use to join violent extremist groups. I will also give you some slides on the policy issues, besides what I've mentioned, like a snapshot of what I mentioned. And I will also give you some few uh, highlights on what works and what does not work in Uganda in general, and what needs to be improved in as far as actions to prevent violent extremism is concerned. Now, this presentation is of evidence that we collected. It's not diluted, it's not thought of from somewhere and I'm going to throw it on you, no. It's what we collected from here. So it is an evidence report that you have seen in the video. I'm sure many people will be thinking that I will be coming with a finished pamphlet like this and it's a report. No. This is a process. We are going to present you the evidence. From that, you give us your views and say this evidence is not adequate. Does not capture what we think it is in Mayuge. One year has passed. If anything happened yesterday, tell us 
and say, add it onto what you have collected last year. Because we want to produce evidence report, and this evidence report will be given back to you. So I want us to be clear, and maybe somebody will be saying, where is the report? Okay? But if you want the slides, or some of the information I've given now, we will give it to you, no problem. That's fine. We are heading towards framing an inclusive mechanism for youth to be included in preventing and countering violent extremism. Not only in Mayuge, but in Uganda and in the Igad region. Mayuge is a special case, and it is, I would say there is um, a blessing that Mayuga has been chosen because we found a lot in this place. A blessing in such a way that it has problems. A disguise in the blessing because it has problems and therefore you have that reality to deal with. I'm sure some of you are not sleeping. I still recall very well some of the pictures that uh, the RDC shared with us at that moment. It's awful, really. Okay. What are some of the pulling factors in Mayuge that we found are actually pulling youth into joining violent extremism in this area? One of these is socialization and domestic dysfunction. We have put these small few words together but under each of these, there are so many qualitative narratives. I have mentioned about the family breakdown and children not being taken care of, which is a parenting issue in Mayuge. We call it domestic dysfunction or not enough. And therefore, youth tend to socialize in their own setting, in their own ways. This brings them to be exposed. They create gaps that parents have not been able to fulfill and somebody takes over and takes that gap and lower this youth because the family is not taking care of some of this youth. So this we found in Mayube is a pulling factor. It pulls youth out to join groups which are extremely violence, but they probably are recruited for radicalization and so forth. Religious indoctrination is one of the factors we found is pulling youth to join violent extremist groups here in Mayuge. Mayuge has serious economic distress probably coming also from the historical. And this economic distress, sometimes it's not only akin to Mayuge, but the entire country. So the issues of how economy benefits the local people in this area is also it featured, it came during our research. And under economic distress, there are so many issues that have come, which uh, I think uh, in the full report you will see that. There are also issues that emerged that cultural ethnic profiling is in Mayuge. There are so many tribes from all over Uganda who are living in Mayuge. Some of them may be for the good reasons, others for the bad reasons. And in one of the questionnaires points clearly that as late as the time of Lakwena, those who were defeated, some of them were still living in the forest of Mayuge and were leading some groups and they were found in one of the commanders from Kitgu. He's living here in Mayuge and was arrested all these years. So Mayuge has many cultural groups, I mean ethnic groups. However, this could not be a problem because diversity is good. But there are elements within these diverse groups who can come in and go out easily and do subversive activities in this district. So it featured, it came out. Political indoctrination of different political parties, different political ideas, 
support different political actors, government, NRM, FDC, everybody want the youth in Mayuge to join their political parties and became, become members. It has also featured and it is happening. Fortunately or unfortunately, political indoctrination is not only akin to Mayuge, but it also came in Kampala and also came in Gulu Kibu, where political parties want, want their members to grow. However, there are certain elements of indoctrination politically in order to lure youth and be part of their movements. We have found strangely, or maybe not strange in my view, that there are serious revenge issues in Mayube. Revenge of somebody killed my parents and then therefore another incident happens and this has featured very strongly also here in Mayuge. And the youth themselves get involved in this hiring of conducting revenge activities. Either in the night or in the day. And this has featured, and this is pulling factors. Now, I go to some of the pulling, the pushing factors. What pushes? some of these youth into violent extremism. Number one, again, socialization and domestic dysfunction is both a pulling and pushing factor. One of the uh, questionnaires says, if you have four uh, you, uh, young men or boys in your family and you are the father, one of them does not behave properly. And you keep telling that young man, you are a thief, you are a bad man, you are bad, you are bad. At the end of the day, what do you expect that boy to take home and sleep with? He will believe he is bad, but in his mind he knows he is not also bad. So anything he does, he will do it because he is being told you are bad. Either he will be angry or he will do it to annoy the others because he is always being separated and told, you are bad, you are bad. Mm -hmm. So this socialization also takes precedence with the peer group, fellow youth, and several places, almost all the questionnaires that we have got in the interviews, youth socialize more with fellow youth, less with parents, less, almost none, with government officials. Government officials are looked at as enemy. And I think that is why we thought, well, let's bring this, some of these youth who are already organized with a football team and take them to the DPC's office and give them the ball and let the DPC, if he can allow, be their matter. And that has worked in Mayube. I'm grateful for that. Uh, economic distress definitely again came, is the pulling factor. It's both push and pull. Most youth of today, it featured. We expect some elders also were telling us in the questionnaire, youth don't want to go to the garden to dig. Youth don't want to weed potatoes, banana plantation. What do they want? They have flash phones smartphone, they go and sit by the roadside and they, they want to know where there is access to Wi-Fi and socialize. It's totally different. Our expectation as households, matching it with the expectations of some of the youth, is totally the opposite. So, are we missing something here? Because the youth are thinking that economic progress is not through agriculture the way we know. Fine, I need food, but it is the responsibility of Mama to give me food. I am not supposed to go digging, it is not my responsibility, but I need food. The mindset of the youth is changing. And this economic distress is not, to them, is not their problem. I just need quick money, I need flash phone, I need Adidas, I need hats, 
and I need yeah, after two years probably to drive a V8 as well. Just like any other. Doesn't matter where the money is coming from. Now the gap is there. Somebody offers a thousand dollars and says, come with me, you will get more. And youth in this region are lured into violent extremism from giving children for free to two hundred dollars. So I want you to know this, and these are pulling factors. Our observation was one boy who was being returned from captivity was freely handed over to radical groups, rescued, brought back, and the day he was brought back, we were there. I saw this young, beautiful boy, innocent, and he was being reunited with his family. I'm sure now he's well and striving and thriving in the different environment. And you can see that it goes to that extent where a child is being given out for free. Therefore, we need to think about that. It is here. So families also play a role. Again, ineffective policy. Ineffective policy of the government is it exists. Structural marginalization, this is historical issues in Mayuge. The location of forests or farmlands to different groups and inhabiting historical inhabitation of the areas that people are living in. Historically, some people were transferred to another place with the promise that you'll go back to your land, but it has not happened. It is featured. Historically, there are issues. The revenge issue is both sides. But most of all, strangely enough, we also found that possession of illegal small arms exists in Mayuge. Now, these are some of the issues we grouped. There are others that came up. Under each of these, there are several narratives. But I hope my summary and Dr. Trofina's work that we have put together summarizes some of the key issues. I want you to add or take away some of the points you think are not appropriate. And also maybe this, the one year that we have not been here, many other things might have happened. So in summary, the quantitative that, that we found is that my UK the first push and pull factor for youth that has been analyzed is poverty and unemployment go side by side. We have unemployment and poverty almost scoring the same points everywhere in our findings. Corruption has also featured very high in Mayuge. And some of the narratives point to the fact that anything that you want to do, you must leave a keto You have to give something small. You want a job, you need to give something. You need anything you need, probably everywhere you go, you need to bribe. Corruption is very high. It is quite high. Political ideologies, political indoctrination came Fourth, there are issues of migration, as we said, ethnic, cultural, and composition of different people, people moving in and out of Mayuge. Some by water to other areas, maybe Kisumu or wherever, some by land to Iganga and other neighboring districts. So there are these issues on migration, which is also an element in violent extremists. Uh, groups featuring in this. Some people might not be living in Mayuge, but they come in and out and get out. I think Mukula was arrested, what is his name? Mukula was arrested in Mayuge. And he was hiding somewhere. I don't know his name. Is it Mukula? Jamin Mukulu. He was arrested from Tanzania, by the way. By Tanzania? Yes. Yeah. I think he escaped from here. Or somewhere, I don't know. So, 
Another issue is religious ideologies. Somehow, religious ideologies has featured like second last. And yet, religious indoctrination and multiple churches and divisions among the different sects also came. So this is an area that probably we need to discuss and then you see whether truly religious indoctrination is not one of the most important issues in lowering youth into violent extremism. The last, of course, is climate change. So this is a statistical corroboration of data that we found in Mayumi. I want you to take that note because I'm going to present Kampala and Gulu, then Uganda in general, then we have a discussion. So I want to go very fast. Maybe you keep the comments until we finish. Is it very burning? No, it's, yeah. it's burning because um, as I said at the beginning, some of the participants who are within Mayuge mm -hmm. have not got what you are talking about. Oh, and yet I would wish them good. to know Very good. that... that, that uh, what is this? So, so some translation. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So that they get to know. Somebody can summarize what... Yes. I summarize. Yes, please. The chair thank, you, thank you very much. Because I want my people to know. Banange, ebio buyekera ema yuge, tukobi enti olono rini ni olutu. Bari tukobera luachi, abana, abafubuka, ukusingira ilala, bari kujava vega itanga kubayekera. Ensonga baga ilene ndi. Aye muni nje edo, ndiku umba umba kunga nkoba. Nti abana, ukusingira ilala, bazila mirimu. Ebio kukola babizira, ila tona tona tuikiri zakani ya yonga, abana, abasinga, abafubuka, tiba kwa. Echo kubiri, obu avugu libo. Omuntu wa bata koze tafuma. Elawe babanga tiba kola, obu avugu indawo. Ata avugu kabaife, obu kola tibenda, benda kuja kumungudo, obu amuguta uni, tuwebonera kugewa sika, chapati omusisi, haba mlala, haba mwetu oleile baba ikumi, obu amunana. Aye, nga balinama simu amane ne, nga smartphone, balikusa zanga, buwala, Nga yesente tindiri kuinjina, ateba na yendo kulia, no kwa ambalo obrunji, no kwewe sao nga vana yungani. Chino chifiri leku, habara vana kubanga. Nga yangano la mko watimuna, wano haliko diyo. Eya getia, niyo nemi yoni yukumi. Tasi maamu, ajabuji. Ayi nga cheba ni mtu walamu, chintu chikambwe, chizimu. Erati yebuza na kwebuza, atene chindi azira ya kubela. Tujira nga batukubela nti enjibi mkufye bazu. Abana wana wa singa kuwa ya abana na abana. Bavubuka na bavubuka. Ti, bazila mikuano na bazaire. Aya atuwa kusinge ino, babona haba kwa ziba government inga haba la vee. Umumu otaira haba kwa ziba government haba ulichika haba polisi, haba ati, baka obani. Bona wana baba wana anga haba la vee. Tibenda kubese mbeleza. Mikuano jaibe jaba bavubuka na bavubuka. Haba tenda hako labo bafana ni edo uza. Echitu echini, mayukeni, eri okulie mguzi kubitibifu. Bana angatipo echini? Ezira afu na mulimo, ngatasa suire kuchi, kuseti. Na kalimakani wa hili akata nukati, na kukwe ya mofisi, na kukusa wakulia. Muli mulimo, ema yuke wakukule kuchi? Bana na abakomi, ebe mebazu. Kati abana baba angatipa funye michi, mirimo. Aba, chitegeza, nti aba line senti. Oba avile, oba avile kwa mbuga, kuwa alina chilese. Oba amune ya niwa hile nichi akola, tafuna. Mubi mkubi ya wazu hile, batukobi ati, ema yuge eno, eri yo okubanga, ifetu ni nama wanga manji, aga njini ema yuge. Katituwa wanga, ate ama wanga gana manji, omotu wa hida, ya aja, aya wa singa, wa singa kuma mamile yo. Ata wa antu wa nawe wa hida, atituwa wa guza, atituwa wa guza, Omuko ziwebi mi no muno nji baida era ni jami rumukuru waile mama kemele da yafuaga na yuge akoka ba kama ni raka la ganti ema yuge na chituli muno nji ba kumi enteni ono mwa na yeba agema ba mtu ala mugutanua gati ye yende ile tache teke kile ai ba mali lisango luna kuno ba mizaba ba kuno ba no ba alivali eno ba mugo na na ku ai yuma na ba muri imbali imba ba banga ba mtu aile mubuye kena gaya na taidi ba kumi enteni ema yuge eno 
tulina ebyo bufuzi ebi analukala la kankoze se chikambe echo nzera lindi dinga bya wangwa ye bikali muuna mubindukira aba abali mayuga mneye ati nzeni mutalabani kakongoli nzeni mu America kakongoli ngo omuntu ni wo mukolochi atakola vya achivuka mpekano bino ebi FDC ebi NRM ebi achi bitwa ka inaye ngatwali bibire ebi achi ebi asoka ngatutandika district ebe bya na bitulete ilo buzibu nti omuntu tati akukola mwine chibi wa kubanga oyo kuvaira na ila mutalabani kuvaira na ila mu America twasigalawo mu mbere batukobye ne chini nti tulina endegerese da madini ga edi tutaire mu ebintu bitaire mu bana omwana nga achidi nti nze edini ne nolienso malinkoba nti yako byokuita abantu obunji yako byokuja muchi mujana era ndi bayo ngane kule banti kiredi era kati omwana ya afa kutonga idinti yemba nedo kutukera obulunji ngafire mu biriguno ndi tabachi bangi kati yako la ne chonga cheka kaisa nga chimukumire mu yabanga peka na bandi twabona duzi kuno twali twakawulira ebe ebe biliyeno abana nga bakoba tinzere mbanga nalo kuka ngane ikirikiza mu ndikirikiza gundi abana bena zaalanga kali kufukecho eyo setani tutubabulire ni wakati wakola tutia mabagoba pekano wetu bagoba afwa ayagana yo olana amulaga anti be mwana toli setani oli wa mugase lolo kubanga oli wa mugase yo sobola nga mamundu waita kwa bana era be bamukula akola ki aja tumaliliza kati koma tidendere yo ile yona etulese ko obuzibu nawe vuka abato nawe bavayo ne bakoba tidero ka malilize na nimeko Mama ni nisa ngomu sana kwa se ya bula ni kafu na mukati kasi ta fido akoba ati chikafu wali mwe nisa ti nira yomu kukola chi mukulima mubu funze ebyo bye bali tu kobera mwe bali mention explicitly is the issue of land land problem exists and it has been mentioned in several places under what i mentioned like structural issues historically so land problem has been mentioned very, very much. And sometimes it has been leading to revenge fighting because of land issues, because of clashes between the different groups, of religious groups. So land, religion, and historical issues is here in the Uganda. <laughs> Ate ye mpala na ye itaka. Abaso katiba tukoba. Ye itaka na umu kazi tibi kola butia. Ye mpala na teko ma. Ye na hawa idukulubo na wajiruwana. Kati tumaliliza. Ye itaka tuzira. Kati chatu vila mwabuzibu. Bunji. Abantu baliku itangana. Abantu baliku temangana kwa itaka. Elio nevi njunga. Okusinzira kubye ira. Yona tukavizu kusa. Ndakule techo kone laku. Ya kwa ati ifo kufa ila na ila tituga magana ya baku na baise iguru. Tuchiwa na echo. Omwana ya na ya sali kwa baamuta amwecho na ila kubaamuta amwecho. Kati chiba chitegeza nti lafu nila kachisa kagema kumuise iguru. Amutuga mtuge. Obobuka mwe. Elake funa ya muko batimuna. Idawa na mkutu wale tuluanisi ya baise iguru. Wakola afia. Haja. Chiku miku chiku miku ba baachi muta amuchava kubaachi dali. Thank you. Okay, let me quickly go to... Uh, Kampala. In Kampala, some of the pushing, pulling factors are number one is wide areas of socialization and this domestication of youth. This is similar, more or less similar to, to, to Mayuge, but it is wide in Kampala. Youth can move freely from one area to the other. Uh, they sometimes you don't know whether your child has gone to school really or not. Sometimes on the way, they don't even reach the school. They go to play with other friends, and the parenting sometimes has not been well. And so many children are walking loose in the day and in the night. You would find children of below 15, 16 years in cities, moving around freely. And this has exposed youth to be pulled into violent extremist uh, groups. Freedom of worship, I don't know if we're going to translate all that. No, uh, no, no, no. For my UBA is critical. Yeah. Um, the freedom of worship uh, leading to multiple unchecked environment. In Kampala, there are so many mosques, 
so many churches, so many uh, groups of religious communities, some of them with loudspeakers in the streets, some of them actually moving with Bibles, standing by the traffic lights, so many of these environments that are exposing youth to violent extremism. And Kampala has a problem of very serious social media access, watching of videos, and going to any corner shops very cheaply, and you can watch any program which is being uh, heard into the internet. There are free access to Wi-Fi, very frequent, and the youth who have access to uh, flash phones and smartphones are able to watch what is happening in Pakistan, they are able to watch what is uh, like Rambo, you can download any kind of videos and they watch. So they are very much uh, having access to that. Politicians also are struggling to recruit youth into their areas of uh, political ideologies, of course in Kampala. We have seen so many groups of youth emerging as Kifesi, emerging as what, as what, there are so many. Now, we have usually fights in Kampala as well, in the different contexts, of course. Kampala's context is different, even if the words sound the same. The context in Kampala, in as far as revenge is concerned, is different. Sometimes they come and throw bombs inside your building or frustrate your work or, you know, vandalize your car. It's a sign that something is happening. And these are involving youth. Some of the identified pushing factors in Kampala, corruption is very high, and police harassment sometimes is very, 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 much, very much noticed, especially on idle youth, if they find you sleeping, Sometimes you just wake up with a stick. You're being beaten up, and sometimes you're picked. So many gangs around, and drug abuse everywhere sometimes you will find in most deprived areas. And this has exposed youth. High youth unemployment due to economic distress, few jobs, corruption, and so forth. This cuts across from rural youth who have come to, to, the, to the city, and also youth who have graduated from universities. There's no job. Very high. Most youth also have expressed frustration, anger, and aggression and in, insensitivities towards the policy of government, and they're taking religious teaching seriously, some of them, and also they act according to the texts narrated to them from mosques, from churches, defend yourself or things like that, jihad. So they take those texts text, and discourses that come from the churches very seriously because they are frustrated, they are angry, they cannot get access to jobs, they have no money, they go to churches and mosques, some of them sleep there, what they call night prayers, from Friday up to Sunday evening, then they come home. So what do they do there? Is it only prayers? So those are areas that we need to think of. Amnesty and structural marginalization and exclusion from jobs. This is very clear in Kampala. If you come from a certain area, there are certain jobs you are not allowed to take because your name starts with O, your name starts with what, or you are from Usoka, maybe you cannot get a job here. And this is very apparent in Kampala. Marginalization leading to alienation towards strict rules of the games, closed, specialized, and spiritual, and anti-spiritual. This one is, um, there are different groups who feel marginalized, and when they get into contacts with groups who are actually uh, identifying them, they get them, either this radicalization goes in closed doors, as we have seen in the mosques, Nobody, even if there were clues that something was happening there, the gravity of that was not felt until when the police went in and saw how big this issue was and the children were there. As low as less than seven years old were being radicalized in that Al, Al Musak mosque. Yes. So this is either closed, under closed doors, what is termed in Mayuge, radicalization being taken, taking place silently. 
in certain areas in Kampala silently and under closed doors. Now, this is what is found in Kampala. Kampala, poverty and unemployment are going neck to neck. There are so many poor people who are poor and are getting poorer and poorer. The few who are rich have money, they are getting richer and richer. Youth tend to think that when they get to college, they have sold everything, including even land, to pay for school fees or whatever, in Makere or anywhere. They don't get job. Automatically, they are rendered poor, and there's no job. So they're in that balance of between poverty and unemployment. They cannot get, get access to, um, to uh, job employment. And they are exposed to corruption, very high corruption. Everywhere they go and attempt to get a livelihood, you must meet adults, which is corruption. Political ideologies, some youth tend to think, well, let's join politics and talk. So join politics in order to survive and listen more to politicians. Migration is mainly about rural, urban uh, migration and also other communities who are actually refugees in other places migrate into cities with different cultures from South Sudan, Somalians, Eritreans, Ethiopians, they're all, Burundi, there are people there in Kampala. And migration plays a, a big role. Religious ideologies, again, is second last, and climate change is last in Kampala. In Bulu, one of the major factors we found is they're trying to get to the pace of development in Uganda that they missed for the past 25 years of war with the current development of modern modernity. You know, people have been in war for 25 years, development was retarded. Now the youth want to live with equal opportunity and equal chance like those who have not experienced war in Kampala. And this pace, which is like lagging, most youth want to get faster. But life today has changed. It's about capitalism. You have, you get it. You don't have. You don't even get the best beautiful girl. If you have, you can marry. If you don't have, you still run around, no wife. The norms are individualism. People are fending for themselves. People are fending for their families. They, for, for their like, wife, children. Now, if you are a son of an uncle, you are a second generation. Probably that cultural way of dealing with family life is changing. So it's about individualism and about materialism. So you find some youth selling their land in order to own a border border and get some money, quick money, every day. The land is gone, the border border breaks down, he falls off the border border, breaks his leg, and the problem continues. Too many religious groups who promise wealth to youth in northern Uganda are multiplying. There is a wide gap that exists for youth to follow the elders and cultural and ethnic profiling that used to be the cornerstone and the strength of families in northern Uganda. The youth and elders are not congruent anymore. Youth are going in different places. The elders are not being listened to, disempowered, sometimes even left to die alone. Too much concentration and variation of political ideologies in the post-war society in northern Uganda. Everybody wants to convince northern Ugandan people to follow their political party. Today they will vote 98% for Kiza Besige. The next election is 98% for Museveni. The next time he go forward, goes there and attracts all the crowd, they're just swaying left and right. So everybody wants to win the favor. And land grabbing is one of the issues which is really serious there in, in, in Bulu, Kitkum, and everywhere, whereby uh, the highest is in Noya, where you might have seen women also undressing themselves mm -hmm. naked. It's an expression of distress. 
and the only property left is to own land. And if it is gone, what else? And most youth would say, should I see anybody coming, even walking past this land, I will kill that person. People were already radicalized and traumatized in the past 20 years of war. It needs only a trigger to generate more radicalization and action. This is why Gulu was very interesting for us, Northern Uganda was interesting, because people have not gone through de-traumatization and radicalization still lives with the mind of the people. You just need another trigger. And land is a trigger in Northern Uganda. Now let us look at the pushing factors in Kitgumbulu. There is a rampant unemployment and stringent, I underline the word stringent, and persistent poverty. Stringent and persistent poverty, recurring again and again and again. So even if the level of poverty in Mayuge is maybe 10%, that of Northern Uganda is stringent and persistent, probably 0. Point something percent. I mean higher, maybe. A diminished NGO world to alleviate economic problems and poverty. This one surprised us a little bit. The NGOs had been assisting people during the war, during crisis, during uh, staying in the camps. But when the war ended, people were told to go back to their villages and NGOs left. They left an atmosphere of NGO de dependency a generation of NGO, some of these children were born in IDP camps. They lived with the help of non-governmental organizations. They went to villages, they don't know what life is. So NGOs, much as they did well, they also left gaps. And some of these youth cannot fend for themselves. There is also ineffective government policy that has not been working in Uganda like Northern Uganda Social Action Fund and uh, post-war uh, post reconstruction and development program in Northern Uganda. Most of these monies have been taken, stolen by whoever knows. And it doesn't reach. It's only announced, but you never see results. Historically, there are some structured mar marginalization and ex exclusion of the North from the colonial time. The divide and rule policy is still being mentioned as one of the marginalization factor in northern Uganda, where northern Uganda was given cotton and you know cash crops to grow, while other parts of the country, especially central, were being educated, giving secretarial work, and they were administrators. This division created some form of and balanced develop development in the country. So it's still being, being mentioned. Um, revenge to regain glory and assets. One of the respondents said, if anybody still thinks that their journeys are finished, they're wasting their time. We have our own glory. Nobody can break us. You can bend us, but you will not break us. We, we have the glory, the pride, and these are coming from youth. So our assets, like land, should never be played with. We are playing with fire. So this is there. Now, very interestingly, I've mentioned small arms proliferation in northern Uganda. It's a very high, although it is here in Manjuga as well, northern Uganda has the highest, more or less. Why? The war in South Sudan is contributing to that. And the war in South Sudan is also contributing to the massive flow of people, migration between the two borders. The same people living on both sides are moving freely from West Nile all the way to Acholi land, that same group of people. So it has future. Graphically, this is what is found in northern Uganda. Now, if you see this graph, it's almost all four compared to my yoga kind of shrinking towards migration and political ideologies. What is interesting here is, instead of poverty, which I had expected to be one of the most rampant in northern Uganda, it was political ideologies and unemployment. 
among the youth. And migration, very high in northern Uganda. Poverty is number four. There are many who have gone back to their land. The land is fertile. It has been followed for over 20 years. You put something, you get. And some people are regaining and actually getting money. So poverty is reducing in northern Uganda in this kind of change. Climate change is affecting, it's getting hotter and hotter. Rain is falling in different periods and sometimes failing farmers. However, religious ideology